Okay, hello everyone. In this video, we are going to be going over the pattern envelope worksheet and reading the pattern envelope in preparation for our pajama pants. You're going to need the worksheet, which should be in your packet, a writing utensil, a pattern envelope, and a measuring tape for when we are finished the worksheet. Okay, so basically when you go to buy a pattern at the craft store or online, you need to pick it out in a catalog and then you use that information to go find the pattern itself and they're stored in pattern envelopes, okay? So in this pattern envelope would be some tissue paper pieces with the outlines of the shapes that you need to cut your fabric into as well as a set of directions. Uh, but before you're able to, you know, get started and pick your fabric and get going and get sewing, you need to do some work reading the actual pattern envelope itself. So that's what this worksheet covers. All right, number one's asking, what is the publisher of the pattern that we are using? So there's a few main publishers. You can see the brand uh, is pretty prominent on this envelope is Simplicity. So we'll go ahead and write that down. Okay, and then the pattern number. The pattern number is right here in the corner. It's 1520A. And what we use the pattern number for is basically uh, locating this pattern either in the store or online. So, you know, if we Googled Simplicity 1520A, we could come up with a number of places to purchase this pattern. Or if we're in the craft store, in the catalog, we say, oh, I like this one, this is the one I want to make we have to find the pattern number here in the corner and then there's a bunch of filing cabinets and you kind of go through those filing cabinets to locate where that pattern is located. Okay. The second question is asking about the sizes and you can see there are some sizes for the US, also Europe and France. Um, in the US it makes extra small to large Okay, and it lists it twice and that's because it makes extra small to large in children's, all right, in kids, as well as extra small to large in adult sizes, okay? Other information on the front of the pattern, you're going to see a, a picture or a drawing of what it's going to make, and usually it breaks it down into each piece that the pattern makes. A lot of pattern envelopes uh, contain information to make multiple different items, okay? So on your worksheet, you should have Simplicity, 1520A, extra small to large, extra small to large. All right, now we're going to flip over to the back of the pamphlet, excuse me, the envelope. And the information on the back is in English and French. Obviously, most of us are going to be looking at the English side. And we're going to start by figuring out what are the garments that we can make using this pattern. And if you come over here, Okay, you can just see a picture here. It's labeled A, B, C, all right? And on our pattern over here, you can see that A makes pants, B makes shorts, and C makes shorts. So those are the garments, the items that this pattern will make. So A is pants, shorts for B, and shorts for C. Okay, you might want to put a little star here next to the one you're thinking you'd like to make. These are full length pants, kind of B is for like the basketball length shorts and C is for the shorter shorts. Okay, the next question is asking you what is the recommended fabric? When you go purchase a pattern, you have to make sure that you're choosing fabrics that are appropriate for this, for that project. So when we look at the envelope here, I'm just asking for you to find the first three. So the first three are cotton, cotton blends, and flannel. There's a bunch of other fabrics that are also appropriate for this project, um, but we are using cotton, cotton blends, and flannel, so those are the three that we're going to jot down. And then it's asking about notions. Notions are things like thread, uh, buttons, hooks. For this project, if 
we come down, we saw our fabrics on your envelope if you're following along. Okay, here it says notions. And the notions for here, the only thing you need is thread. So we're just going to go ahead and write that down. And the last question is asking what part of the body must be measured to determine your pattern size. Most people in our classes are going to be making teens and adults sizes. So I'm going to draw a little arrow here just for you guys so that we're looking in the right spot on your envelope. So with the teens and adults up here, you can see it's for child teens, but this is too small for most of our students. In the teens and adults, okay, body measurements, it just lists hips. So the only part of your body that you need to measure, okay, to determine your size for this project is your hips. So it gives some measurements here uh, and their corresponding sizes, which we're going to look at when we flip to the next page. So your worksheet here, we should have all filled out. Now if we go ahead and flip to the other side of this worksheet, this next question is asking about, all right, here's the body measurements. We're measuring our hips. What are the actual measurements and their corresponding sizes? Make sure that we're looking here at the teens and adults, not up here at the child teens. So if I go ahead, you can kind of see, I'll put this paper here. All right, so extra small is 31 to 32 and a half. And these are all in inches, okay? Small is 35 to 37. Medium, 39 to 41. Large, 43 to 45. And extra large is 47 to 49. Okay. Now please keep in mind as we move through these projects and questions that these sizes, okay, this is what's suggested for what's going to fit in terms of your body into those pants. If you're not sure where you are in the range, you can come down and actually see, okay, how big the garment is. The actual garment is listed here. So you can see that you're going to have some extra inches built in. Um, so our pants do have a bit of extra room built in for each pattern size. Okay, so number six is now asking, okay, we know the sizes. Now, how much fabric do we need to make a particular size? If you were in a store, not in FCS, you would have to find your how much fabric you need and then pick it out and go to the counter to have it cut. So this is asking how much fabric is required to make size medium A pants. So what we need to do is come here. Here's A pants. All right. There's two widths of fabric. We almost always are making the first width 45 inch. So if I put my paper here, these are all the different amounts. If I come down from medium from A pants, I can see that I need two and three quarters yards. Okay, so do kind of try to follow along on your envelope as well. All right, the next one is to make how much fabric is required to make size small B shorts. So remember B are those longer shorts. Okay, so if I come up here, I'm going to keep coming down to B shorts. Go ahead and look at the 45 inch wide fabric. Okay, and let's see, what size do I want to make? Small. So if I come over here, look at small, you can see how many yards is that? One and a half. All right, so we can write down one and one half yards. Okay, the next part we're going to look at is elastic. And for this pattern, every size needs the same amount of elastic. So it's right here where it says ABC elastic. You need one and five eighths a yard of one inch wide elastic. Okay, so I'll put that one and five eighths yards. Okay, now we have all the information for you to go ahead and, if you are at the store, purchase your fabric. Or if you're here, 
measure yourself and select your fabric. Uh, so that's the next step on the worksheet. Okay, get this out of our way. Now, what we're gonna use this information for is comparing it to our actual body measurements. So that's why we got the measuring tape out, okay? You need to measure your hip. If you are confused as to where your hip is, it's basically the widest part of your bottom half, okay, or your butt, okay? So you're just gonna wrap the measuring tape around your hips, which is the widest part of your bottom half, all right? And we wanna measure in inches, not squeezing our body, just wrapping it around and writing down that measurement, okay? So for example, if I measured my hips and I saw that I was 34 and one half inches, okay? I would write that down right here. Now what we use this information to do is figure out, okay, what size am I? So based on my hip measurement, what teen adult size would I select? So this is where we come back to either looking at the envelope, okay, or looking at our chart up here. So 34 inches. I can see I'm bigger than an extra small and I'm smaller than a small, okay? So I'm gonna put a little star right here. This is for this person. You have to measure your own hips and see where you fit. Um, for this person, they have to decide, are they gonna stick with extra small or stick with small? The best way to do this is, one, look at the examples of pants we already have sewed, and you could even try them on, okay? The other way to do it is to look at how much extra fabric is built into each size and see if you think that's going to work for you. So remember I said there's extra fabric built in if I come down here and look at the hips, okay, for since I'm in between extra small and small, the extra small is at 36 inches and the small is at 40, okay, the actual garment itself. So that gives us a little extra room. Being that you're a person in middle school, you might be heading up towards the small. That way your pants are gonna fit you for longer, okay? But if you feel like you've already done most of your growing, you're not going to get much taller or bigger, then you might head to the extra small. That's just gonna be based on your personal preference, okay? If you fall nice and neat in a category, then sticking to that category should work fine. So you're gonna go ahead and write down your size here and then the next thing to do is take a look at actual fabrics and start deciding how you're, want, you're, go, you're gonna want your pants to look, okay?